we believe is now the most intelligent AI, I think we'll start getting some consumer neural interfaces. Have you ever thought about how you want to be remembered? Yeah, sure. I mean, I, I, I... Mark Zuckerberg on a UFC card could be a possibility one day. Yeah, no, I mean, look, I've, I've wanted to do a, a competitive fight. But then, of course, the full vision is you just have like a full field of view, holograms where, you know, we're having this conversation in the future and like... I think I can speak we'll for the see, world right? where we, we would love to see that. That would be an incredible spectacle. Um, I think there's a, there's a reasonable shot at that. That's crazy. That's crazy. Mark? Thanks so much for joining me. Super excited for this conversation. Uh, figure we can jump right into it, shall we? Let's do it. Happy to do it. So huge meta AI announcements today. Uh, I'm especially excited about Llama 3. See the PC behind me. I got Llama 2 on there, a smaller 13 billion, uh, 13 billion parameter version. Uh, so super pumped to get my hands on Llama 3. But I want to know what are you most excited about from today's announcements? Oh, man. All right. Well, I think the thing that most people are going to notice are the meta AI improvements. So we're rolling out this new version, which with the Llama 3 upgrade, we believe is now the most intelligent AI that everyone is going to be able to freely use out there. And, you know, we're integrating Google and Bing to give it real time knowledge too. Uh, we're integrating it across Facebook and WhatsApp and Instagram and, um, and Messenger right into the search box at the top. So, you know, whenever you have a question, you can just ask the question right in any of the apps. Um, we're rolling in a bunch of unique creation features that I think are pretty cool. I mean, now Meta AI can take any image and animate it for you. Uh, but I think one of the things that's actually the most wild is uh, it now generates high quality images so fast that as you're typing, I don't know if you've got a chance to play with this, but as you're typing, it creates the images and updates them in real time. So you can just describe what you're, what you wanted to generate an image of and and it'll just kind of make it and kind of hone the the image right so it's like all right um you know let's do a you know ufc fight and you know you start describing the people and you start describing the venue and it all just kind of comes into focus and it's it's pretty wild so i think a lot of people are going to love that um there's a lot more in there but we're going to start rolling it out and i'm just really excited for people to get their hands on it yeah, I mean, I saw the demo and it was phenomenal. I actually, I actually asked if it was sped up because I'd never seen anything like that. So I, I was really surprised. Um, speaking of meta AI, I want to commend you for leading the charge in open source AI. That conversation is so nuanced and complex. We don't have the time to get into it. But I do think, I think it's more important than many people understand. The reason why is you're making this technology available to 3 billion people, which is, I think about that number and it, it's hard to, hard to grasp. But what are, what are some of the ways that brands and creators alike can use meta AI, you know, across WhatsApp, Instagram, Facebook, et cetera, to really to help reach more people, to empower their community and to accomplish their goals? Yeah, I mean, I think for a lot of people, the, the first thing is it can basically just answer any question that you have. So, you know, if you want to if you have an informational question, you can ask it. But, you know, I don't know, like one thing I was doing the other night was, you know, I, I got a group of people together and we we're going to do karaoke. So I just asked them, like, all right, here's the people who are here go generate a like a set list for us and pairs to sing karaoke together. And it basically made a set list where it, it paired us up and told us what songs to sing. And it was pretty, it was pretty funny. Um, so, I mean, it's, this is the point. It's like generative, right? It can create new things. Um, creating content is awesome, right? Creating the high quality images, uh, creating animations of that is awesome. Being able to edit them. Um, I, I think like for, for content production and editing, um, there's just going to be so much value across all of these things. So yeah, I mean, I, I'm, I'm really excited to see how people use it. It's, it, they're just very powerful tools. So it's not just one thing that you can use it for, which is partially what I'm excited about integrating it into everything that we're doing. I do think we're going to get to a point pretty soon where every creator and every business has an AI of their own to help them talk to their community or their customers. If you're a business, um, you know, we're not, all the way there yet we're taking some early steps for that and we'll have i'll have more to share on that later in the year but I'm, I'm pretty excited about that one too so are you personally using ai in like your daily workflows or is it more like kind of these one-off sort of tasks and, and use cases yeah i mean one of the things that i found is because i've been playing with the the version that we're that we're rolling out today uh for a few months now as we've been building it internally and one of the things that i found is that now that it's integrated into the search box in all our apps um I just use it, it's my go-to thing whenever I have a question, right? Whether it's a kind of generative or creative question 
or if it's like a factual thing, um, you know, a lot of the time it's just faster for me to get the answer there by, you know, typing the question into, you know, the search bar on WhatsApp or the search bar on Instagram, um, than whatever I would have done before. So yeah, I mean, I probably, I don't know, I probably do like, I don't know, dozens of, of queries a day at this point. Um, and some of it is just stuff that like you wouldn't have had any other tool to use before, whether it's, um, you know, creating content. I mean, I just, I mean, my daughters love this. I mean, I just, you know, part of our bedtime routine is I just like, we sit there and like imagine things and they love playing with it and they love playing with the the new fast version because now they can just get feedback as they're going. So I don't know, it's 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 pretty wild, but I mean, it can do so much that I think it's, it's just really personal. It's amazing how fast you've, you know, like search engines, right? They've kind of been disrupted. I'm doing more queries on AI now and generative AI than I've done on, you know, the traditional search engines. And I find that incredible how fast it's all gone. Um, I, I wanted to mention, I did last, I think it was last September, MetaConnect. Anecdotal from my point of view, I, I thought that was the most excited, like genuinely that I've seen you in your career. And, it, you know, I wanted to ask, like all of your big bets are kind of coalescing, like these technologies are coalescing into this grand vision. And I, I just wanted to ask you, is this the most excitement that you've had in your career as a builder, as an entrepreneur? I don't know, probably. I mean, I guess the early days of the company are sort of equal parts excitement, but stress. Because I mean, when you're starting a company, you're like on the verge of your company collapsing at any point. So, and obviously we're a little further along now, so I don't, I don't worry about the company falling apart on a daily basis. And then, you know, you go through different, um, different phases where there's just different concerns and, and different things that we had to deal with, right? There's you know, a lot of politics stuff that we had to deal with over the last decade. And I feel like we're sort of coming to a, to a phase now where there's just so much innovation and especially the AI wave, but I think also the metaverse wave. Um, it just, I, I think that this is like one of the most, this is, this is to me what is awesome about the tech industry is like, you know, you can build a company and you're not going to do the same thing for that long. You know, you just basically, you build, you, you keep building and then every once in a while you get some new set of technologies that just comes and changes everything about what you need to do. And, and there's this just ability to reimagine everything from scratch. And I love that. I mean, that's so, yeah, I think that this is a, you know, between these things, it's um, an AI and, and then some of the metaverse stuff, you know, which I still think is pretty early, but it's um, it's really coming along now. It's just super exciting. Yeah, I wanna, and I want to touch on that, but I do want to talk about the Ray-Ban metas. I got them right here. Yeah, yeah, totally. I'm going to take a video here, but I do think this is the product of the year. And I'm not just saying that because I'm talking to you. If you go through my library of content, I've been saying this for a long time now. It is the, the only tech that I own that's literally functional 24-7. Be even if the battery runs out, they're stylish, right? It's cool. It's a great pair of glasses. Um, I take my phone calls on it. The, the speaker fidelity is surprisingly good. Microphone quality is great. I'm getting a lot of BTS. I can go on and on. I think it's the closest thing we have to Jarvis. Um, but I wanted to ask you, what will this device be capable of? Let's say V7. What does it look like in 2029? Oh, man. Yeah, I mean, I mean look... I think the Ray-Ban Meta glasses have really outperformed even what I hoped that they would do. So yeah, and, and I agree. I think the audio, being able to take calls, you know, listen to audiobooks, listen to music, all of that are kind of sleeper features that people don't even think about. But but then obviously the hero feature was integrating AI into it. And, um, and we're really close to even just having multimodal AI. So you'll be able to, that. what that basically means is you don't just ask it a question with text or voice, but you can ask it you know, things about what's going on around you and it can see what's going on around you and it can answer your questions. And that's pretty wild. Um, I, I think over time, there's two main directions for the glasses. And the glasses, you know, like you're saying, really bring together both the AI part of the vision and the um, the kind of metaverse presence part of the vision. Um, the AI, I think, is just going to get more and more powerful. So right now, you know, what we're going to roll out soon uh, we've been testing it for a while. Is basically the ability for it to answer questions based on taking an image. But you can you can imagine, you know, pretty soon it'll be able to, you know, look at what's going on around you in real time and a video. And you know, say you're you're cooking something, and it can just give you feedback. It's like, hey, you're doing that wrong, right? Like, do this instead. So, I mean, that that I think will be pretty awesome when we can get to that. Um, on the glasses side, the other dimension is just being able to have displays, right? So, I mean, one of the things that is kind of interesting about the Ray-Ban Metas is that it's so functional, it can, it can do so much without even having a display in it. Uh, but I think pretty soon you'll start getting two other options for glasses. 
one that has a small display so you can see notifications or a little bit of information, right? So if a friend texts you, you'll get that. Um, if you want to ask a question to AI, you'll be able to get that and get it to kind of visually the answer put um, in, in your in your vision instead of just having it have to speak to you. I think that'll be exciting. But then, of course, the full vision is you just have like a full field of view holograms where, you know, we're having this conversation in the future and like I'm sitting on your couch next to you as a hologram and we're just there and we have this full sense of presence. And that's like the full dream of the metaverse is basically enabling those kind of social connections with a you know, stylish pair of glasses. Um, so it's uh, it's not that far away, right? I mean, some of the stuff, you know, it's still the first version of it is going to be, you know, more expensive than we'd like. It's, um, you know, it's getting it into a stylish pair of glasses that's that's thin is, is going to take maybe a couple of generations. But I don't know, overall, I mean, I look at the stuff that we're building in the lab and it's, uh, it's an exciting uh, bunch of years we have coming up. Yeah, I mean, you know, big tech and startups alike, there's a lot of talent right now building these AI wearables. I do think that the right form factor is eyewear, right? I think the context is is important. Um, and also, th this is the first product, I'm sure you've noticed, the first product of its kind to, to have really been accepted by the zeitgeist and sort of embraced by the culture. Were you surprised by that at all? Well, we worked with um, Essilor Luxottica, which is the company they, they own Ray-Ban and, and a bunch of the other brands. They're, they're great eyewear designers and distributors. And Part of the you know the big part of the reason that we worked with them is because um, you know eyewear is a whole thing right and you know fashion is um, you know not what our company has historically done and eyewear specifically has a lot of constraints around um, you, you know you you want to make it so that it can work optically well for people right people have prescriptions you know you need sunglasses indoor glasses all this um, so that was the thing that we paid a lot of attention to and why we've made such a deep partnership with them. And um, I think that that's part of, that's a big part of why it's worked, right? Is, is basically we're bringing this kind of cutting edge AI and software technology, and they're bringing uh, decades of experience and building some of the best eyewear. And um, I don't know, it's, it's, it's just been great. Now, I think the roadmap ahead is super exciting too. Uh, but, but yeah, I mean, um, I mean, the fact that you can cram that much functionality and technology into a $300 pair of stylish glasses is, you know, it's pretty wild. Yeah, I mean, it's phenomenal. I actually just bought another pair, the one with the transition lenses. So I, I love these things. Uh, kudos to you. Kudos to Meta. Yeah, the transitions are good. I, I, I just remember when I was growing up, I, I was sort of like biased against transitions because they always transition slowly and were like kind of dorky. But now it's like it goes pretty quickly and it actually like works for, you know, t for, for when you're inside I, I've, and I've been outside. I've rocking them all so. the time and I, I love them. Um, but speaking of hardware, it's been 10 years now since the Oculus, a Oculus acquisition, 10 years of Reality Labs. Uh, I think you're coming up on three years, maybe two and a half years since the rebrand of Meta. Look, at the beginning, you had your fair share of doubters, right? Like the, the Metaverse kind of vision at first was sort of ridiculed. The Instagram acquisition at first was kind of nobody really understood. Nobody's laughing now, right? Everybody's like, okay, we, we see, we see what, where he was going with this. You're, you're prescient. So the question that I had for you, is there anything you're working on now that you think may be underrated or has undue skepticism around? Well, I actually think the metaverse stuff um, is still pretty early. And I think from a technology perspective, a lot of people believe it's going to be it's it's going to be a really important and big thing. I'd say a lot of people in like the business community still look at how much we're investing in this. I mean, it's billions of dollars a year that we're basically kind of spending and investing in building technology for the future to build a business in the future. Um, but I, I think that's um, I think there's a lot of people who who. Um, you know, still are, are waiting to see more progress there. And I think the next several years are going to be pretty exciting on that. But yeah, I mean, I think we've seen huge leaps in mixed reality. I mean, Quest 3, the first mainstream mixed reality device. Um, I'm super happy and proud of our team with how that stacks up. And I mean, I did this whole video about how I thought in a lot of ways, it's like actually better than Vision Pro, which is like seven or eight times more expensive. So um so that was really fascinating to see because I mean, I mean Apple's obviously it's like this mythical hardware company, and I didn't know what they were going to come up with when they when they entered the space that we were working on for a while. Were they just going to come up with something that like you know just made us feel like we really you know missed some some important advances? But we didn't. I actually I just I mean the like the more I've spent time with their thing, the better I feel about what we're doing. Um, and then you know I feel like the second version of the Ray Ban Metas on the glasses has been super promising and and like. And you know, it's all we, we built multiple times more of them uh, 
than the first version because we expected more people to want to buy it, but it's been sold out in most places. So it's actually hard for us to get a sense of just how many people want them. Um, hopefully we'll, we'll, uh, we'll be able to build more soon and get them in more places, but I don't know. I think for the next version of the glasses, one of the things that I'm pretty excited about, I think we'll start getting some consumer neural interfaces soon. I think that's going to be pretty wild. Um, I'm not talking about something that jacks into your brain. I'm talking about something that you wear on your wrist that can basically read um, neural signals that your brain sends through your nerves um, to your hand to to basically move it in, in different subtle ways that are maybe not perceptible to people around you. But we're basically able to read those signals and and be able to use that to control your glasses or other computing devices. And I think that's going to be pretty wild. And, you know, we're obviously still at the beginning of that journey because we haven't rolled out the first version of the product, but, you know, playing with it internally, it's, um, it's, it's really cool. I'm, I'm really, really interested to see, well, well see what people do. Well, I'm that. excited. I actually use my quest three almost every day boxing and I, Dude, I'm drenched in sweat yeah. after like three rounds in that thing. So real quick, I did yeah. want to say that my dream is to one day have like two 8K resolution on each eye, maybe 2030. I want to get the full haptic body suit, no latency, and I could spar my friends across the globe. I'll be a very happy man. So uh, th that's what I would love by 2030. I think there's a, there's a reasonable shot at that. And I think boxing is doable. You know, the one is as an MMA fan, I think simulating some of the grappling pieces seems like it would be harder to do. Um, and also it's a little harder to like pull a kick than, than kind of punch in the air and then pull that back. So, but I think boxing, it, you, you can already simulate really well. And I think it's an awesome experience and it is a really good workout. And a lot of people use this. An uh, incredible workout. workout so. Yeah. The Jersey swap with Jensen Huang, right? That, that's an iconic photo. Um, what is, what does it look like when Mark Zuckerberg and Jensen Huang have a conversation over dinner, right? Like two dudes with a trillion dollar company, no big deal. You know, you got, you guys talking about compute is it the future of ai what did that conversation look like i mean it's it's wide ranging you know jensen is actually he's really into cooking so you know it's like he invited me over to his house i mean I, the last one he came over to my place but um but went over to his place and he's like all right let's make cheese steaks and i'm like hell yeah let's make cheese steaks it's like that's what, that's awesome so yeah so i mean we were talking about all the stuff around our companies and um you know i mean usually we're more interested in sort of industry trends and, and, and also just values and like how you, like how, how his, how he approaches building his company. He asks me a lot of questions. Um, he and I actually at this point are the two longest standing tech founders of, um, of, of, of the big tech companies. He's actually been at it for more than, I think more than 30 years. So, um, or almost 30 years. So, um, so he's been doing it a bit longer than me, but uh, but we have a lot of lot of stories and experience that we that we share, and I, I just appreciate his wisdom on all this stuff. And I, I love that. I mean, the founder DNA is super evident, right? So, so it, it, I love that you made that point. Uh, I want to talk about 2024. This is the big year. You're turning 40 in a month, as I understand. Facebook recently yeah. turned 20. Uh, I'm ready. I'm ready. You, you've been at it for a long time, and I, I know you have another, you know, 60, 70 years to make impact on this world. But have you ever thought about how you want to be remembered? When it's all said and done. I mean, yeah, sure. I mean, I, 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 I want the stuff that I build to have a good impact. Um, you know, and I, you know, I think a lot of the stuff you live on through the, you know, your family and the people around you. So, I mean, I just, you know, care a ton about, you know, raising my daughters to be good people. And, um, I think that that, I don't know, at the end of the day, I think that that matters a lot. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I guess we're we're all we're all still pretty young. So I mean, I, I you know, rather than spending a ton of time thinking about legacy, I mostly just think about kind of how I want to live and what I want to build and um, and what kind of values I want to you know pass along to you know, help raise our family. Well, speaking about how you want to live, I thought we could go into sort of this rapid fire round. Um, yeah, you, sure. You, you've been living pretty good, man. I, I see on Instagram, it's like a new hobby or skill or mastery every day. And which has been awesome to see. But my question is, is that actually you posting on Instagram and threads? Because if oh, it yeah. is, how do you find yeah. time? I, yeah, I mean, well, uh, it's it's not that much time. I'm not like, I'm not on there every day. Um, or, sorry, I, 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 sorry, I'm not posting something every day. I, I, I'm definitely using the products every day. Um, but I'm not, I'm, I'm not posting stuff like every hour. I mean, um, but uh, 
I don't know. I mean, I, I, I think that it's important in life to kind of make time for, for hobbies and to learn different things, right? I mean, uh, you know, obviously at the company, we're on these long-term journeys, uh, you know, building AI, building the metaverse. These are kind of 10 plus year journeys, um, but you want to stay fresh and you want to do different things. And, um, and then obviously different things happen in the world, right? So I, I mean, I blew out my ACL last year um, training for an MMA fight. And, um, so yeah, I mean, things have looked a little different since then. I mean, that's been, it's been an interesting rehab and recovery and, you know, a lot of the stuff that I was doing before I couldn't do, you know, took the opportunity to, you know, learn some new things and, and do some different things. So that's been, you know, just trying to make the most of it. I saw you on the leg press. So it looks like the recovery is going well, maybe even ahead of schedule. Oh, it's good. It's going well, but I'm, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to, I'm going to let it take the full time. I'm not, not in a rush to, to get back to competition, but yeah. Well, we were talking about the UFC a little bit earlier. Uh, I, I did want to ask you who you think is the best MMA fighter of all time, pound for pound. Oh, I don't know. I mean, I mean, Volk is is my champion. You know, I mean, I love that guy. Um, I mean, I, I think he, you know, he's he's obviously had had a had a tougher go of it for the for the last couple, but um, but I mean, he's he's amazing. So um, I don't know. There's there's a, there's a lot of good people. I've gotten a chance to get to know him a bit. He I, so you know. I've, I mean, I, I think he's great. No, that's great. I mean, I wouldn't have an answer. I, I you know, there's I mean, GSP, Silva, Mighty Mouse, the list goes on. It's impossible to choose one. All those guys yeah, are incredible. Sure. Um, yeah. And yeah. you mentioned your recovery, but I did see uh, Puberty on Instagram posted, you replied to one of their comments that you said, Mark Zuckerberg on a UFC card could be a possibility one day. I just wanted to see if that, that is something in the card. Oh yeah, no, I mean, look, I've I've wanted to do a, a competitive fight for for a while, and I was training for it when I got injured. And you know, my my goal at the time was to do it before this birthday, but obviously, you know, that's not going to happen because I'm not going to be fully recovered yet. But I mean, I, I'd still love to do it at some point. I just, I just think it's like it would be I don't know the thrill of of competing is um it's just such a rush, and I think it also focuses your training and makes it so that you learn more. Um, in a way that, that you're just like a little more casual and laid back about it if you don't have a goal that you're going towards. So, um, yeah, no, I, I'd love to, I'd love to do a competition I mean, whether it's UFC or something I, else. I, I well, think I can speak we'll for the see, world right? where we, we would love to see that. That would be an incredible spectacle. Um, and, and just to sort of end this conversation, uh, you know, you obviously you've inspired millions of entrepreneurs and builders and technologists. Um, but to me, you've really inspired me as, as a husband to Priscilla and as a father to your three girls. I just had a baby girl. She's eight months. And I wanted to ask. Oh, congrats. Thank you, man. Uh, as a new girl, dad, do you have any advice for me? Oh, I mean, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if there's anything girl dad specific. Um, but I don't know. It's just, it is super fascinating seeing how they, how they come out and grow up. I mean, I think that they, every one of them clearly comes out with, with their own values and, and their own kind of passions and things that they care about. And, um, I just feel like as a parent, you want to kind of pass along traditions and values to ground them, but you're also just trying to nurture the things that they're, that they love and, and care about. And, um, you know, it's, I mean, our kids are just so different and the age that you're talking about, it's, uh, it's kind of, it's a very cool age. I mean, they're very cute, but they're the, the, uh, the, personality is just starting to come out and then you know once they can start speaking more you you really start getting a feel for um for what they're going to gravitate towards but i don't know i i like i don't want to project too much onto my kids like what i want them to be interested in and i'm not even sure you can i mean i i think it's um uh they 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 just you know have such sort of interesting perspectives on things. And I think like as a parent, you learn as much from watching them and seeing stuff through their eyes as you kind of pass along to them. Yeah. Well, you know, it's, it's the eight months have gone by like this, this interview did as well. Uh, I really, really enjoyed it, Mark. I really appreciate the time. Yeah. Thanks. I mean, I, I, I mean, I love everything that you do online. So it's, it's, uh, it's been cool to get a chance to chat.